Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with a very special lesson for the Frigate Pilots Manifesto, the series that aims to teach you everything you'll need to know about the different frigates in EVE Echoes. In today's video, I'm coming at you from the Fulmination Content Creator Test Server, and I'm doing that because today we're going to be looking at some more ships that are not currently available to fly on the live server, though they do appear in Tech 6 Encounters and Tech 6 Anomalies. I am, of course, talking about the Tech 6 E-War frigates. Now, I've looked at the Tech 4 electronic warfare frigates in the past, especially the Crucifier and the Vigil. What I'm talking about here, though, is the Crucifier E-War, the Vigil E-War, the Griffin E-War, and the Mauless E-War. As I said, these appear in uh, as pirates that you can fight, but they're not ships that we are currently able to fly. They don't appear on any of the ship trees, they don't appear in the market panel. As far as I'm aware, they don't appear in any of the skins either, but I could be wrong on that. Some of you have spotted things like the command destroyers and that in skin menus in the past. So, what we're going to do then today is have a look at these four missing frigates, and we're going to talk about how they stack up compared to their Tech 4 variants. Now, of course, this does come with that usual addendum, I'm on Fulmination, these are unreleased ships, the statistics and details that I'm going to be talking about in today's video may be changed before this all goes live. I mean, certainly I don't think a lot of people are going to forget the time that I did a Tech 8 video when I talked about all the exciting things coming in Tech Level 8, only for them to change the interceptors almost completely, literally a day later. Then I made a video all about the Tech 9 battleships, and again, they shifted them round in less than a week from when I made the video um, to that going, like the rock moving up, the raven coming down, the tempest coming down, and the maelstrom going up, that kind of thing. So do take all of this with a healthy pinch of salt. This is how it exists at the moment in the background data on a content creator exclusive test server. It may change before it goes live. Anyway, if you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, sub to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell to never miss an upload, and let me know in the comments section down below what ships and topics you want me to cover in future videos. I do have a Patreon page if you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, and if you've ever fancied wearing Captain Benzie or Catskull Academy merchandise, we do have a Red Bubble merch store that you can check out as well, link is in the description. That all said and done then, let's jump right in to talking about the Tech 6 E-War Frigates. Now the first of these that we're going to have a look at then is this handsome devil on screen now, the Amar Crucifier E-War. Now if you've watched my video on the Tech 4 Crucifier, you'll know that I absolutely adore the visual design of this ship. I love that split hole design with these powerful sensor arrays and emitters on the inside. I love this claw-like clamshell look to the exterior and the way that it sort of closes in on itself as it approaches warp speed. And I adore even the way that it's got these fins and this bridge-like structure at the back. It's not actually a bridge, the capsule doesn't go in there. In fact, according to the Frigates of Eve Online book, the, uh, the, the capsule in this ship actually goes underneath this large hatch that you see here, on this port side armature at the rear end of the ship, that's where the capsule goes. Very cool looking ship, and I love the fact that the Tech 6 variant has that beautiful red and gold that I talked about at length in the Dragoon Sniper video, I love that colour scheme, it's an excellent colour combination. Anyway, looking at the actual ship itself, I'm referring to this as a Tech 6 ship because it appears in Tech 6 Encounters and Tech 6 Anomalies. That's where I'm basing that information off. As I said, it doesn't appear in any of the ship trees, it doesn't appear on the market menus, anything like that. This is another one of those ships that we do just have to pull out of the game data and bring it into effect. It did exist briefly during the open beta test. I don't think they were in the final test. I don't remember getting to see one of these in the final test servers, um, but the open beta definitely had them, I just never got around to flying them at that point. Anyway, so the Crucifier E-War, we've got a fitting profile here of two high slots, three mid slots, two low slots, two engineering rigs, and two um, combat rigs. Now, that's a very slight improvement over the Tech 4 variant, basically we've got an additional mid slot, that's all that's changed here on the fitting profile, otherwise it was 2-2-2, 2-2 for the Tech 4 version, we've got the third mid slot however. Now, 
that makes sense. This is an electronic warfare frigate, and of course, E-War modules tend to be mid-slots. This means that you can actually fit the Crucifier E-War the same way that I fit the Crucifier in my video on it, but we now have space in the mid-slots to also add something like a large group shield booster, which we can replace any form of uh, modules in the low slots that we were using for tanking instead. So we can actually go for something like an afterburner and a heatsink in the low slots, which allows us to increase our damage output in PvE. For PvP, however, of course this means that you can fit a Warp Scrambler and two Weapon Disruptors. That's the kind of power that we're talking about here. Now, in regards to the rest of its stats, curiously, the power grid has actually gone down. It's gone from 50 megawatts down to 49. It's only minor, but it does kind of push you to have those engineering skills. I don't know if that's something that would change um, or if that's intentional, but it would push you to have frigate engineering just to give you that little bit of extra space on this one. The defense, again, has gone up up this time, 2293, up from 1336. That is quite a considerable increase in defences. Capacitor, again, is a big increase, 484 up to 518. So we're, it's expecting to have a third mid slot there that is going to be, you know, sapping onto our capacitor. It does mean, however, that with the power grid change as well, that additional mid slot is not likely to be anything oversized like a Nosferatu or an oversized neutralizer. It is going to be just like another one of the electronic warfare mod modules like the tracking disruptors, or as I said, a group shield emitter, because those are great fun on frigates, very, very powerful. In regards to the signature radius and the flight velocity, this ship is smaller. The previous version was 32.3 meters in signature radius and had a flight velocity of 426, so the Crucifier E-War is smaller and faster, which makes it even better at speed tanking, which means that this ship should theoretically actually cope with the same kind of encounters that we saw the Tech 4 deal with, but obviously faster and safer, and possibly even go up to like Tech Level 8 or Tech Level 9 encounters. I need to get, take these out for a proper spin and maybe showcase these in a future video as well. Interesting to note as well, the mass has changed slightly. The mass here is slightly increased over this te uh, the Tech 4 Crucifier, and the inertia modifier has gone from 1.9 to 2.0, making it slightly more cumbersome. Though in in return for that as well, we have a considerably higher scan resolution, 792 up from 459. Now, if we were to look at the Crucifier E-War's statistics here, its actual skills and things, you'll see that there's still signal disruption that we were getting here, um, and that has now actually been renamed to that skill properly, which is pretty cool. Um, rather than a 5% increase in tracking disruptor strength, it is a 7.5% increase in tracking disruptor strength, which means, of course, we have um, more powerful electronic warfare uh, modules here on the ship, and the Advanced Frigate Command bonus has gone from a 8% increase in small laser damage and a 5% increase in optimal range to 15% increase in damage and 7.5% in optimal range. That's going from 40% up to 65% on the damage and going from 25% to 37.5% on the optimal range, which means the Crucifier E-War, other than its power grid, curiously, is literally a direct upgrade over the Tech 4 variant. And I, I do get a little bit disappointed in stuff like this. And I do, I'm going to go on a brief tangent here that won't appear in the other four versions and um, when we look at the other three ships. Um, but I do get a little bit disappointed when one ship comes out and it just completely flat out replaces the other. Like literally here, the only reason to fly a Crucifier instead of a Crucifier E-War is just cost. If cost is not a factor, the Crucifier E-War is just a flat out better ship. What I would like to see them do here is to give the Crucifier E-War that additional mid-slot and the additional uh, like tracking disruptor strength and its skill bonus, but I would love to see that the Crucifier gets higher damage and better optimal range on the lasers, so these stats here, the 15% and the 7.5%, give those to the Tech 4 Crucifier, and give the E-War the Tech 4 versions of these skills. So you get less damage out of a Crucifier E-War, but you get much better electronic warfare support. This is actually how they've done things in EVE Online. You get the Crucifier, which is a ship that is designed around electronic warfare, and then further up the tech scale, you get the Crucifier Navy issue, which replaces all the electronic warfare functionality with additional damage and survivability instead, which kind of gives you a choice then between which of those two ships you want to fly. Here in EVE 
Echoes, it's the other way around. We've got a basic Crucifier, then we've just got kind of a Crucifier 2. It's just a better version of the ship, and that does kind of make me sad, because it means that when the Crucifier E-War is added, there's no real reason to ever fly a Crucifier other than cost, and if you prefer the look of a white and gold hull over a red and gold hull. Next up then is the Minmatar Vigil E-War, and this is quite a controversial ship for me, visually at least. Now, of course, it looks like the standard Tech 4 Vigil, which I have already covered in a previous video, but it is in the white, mottled sort of colour, like the Probe Covert Ops, and like the Thrasher 2. This is what is referred to as the Fucker Mix variant of colour schemes. Um, now, the Thucker tribe are essentially, in the backstory at least, they are a group of Minmatar that travel through, they are nomadic, and they travel in caravans through the Great Wildlands. Their approach to shipbuilding has always been put more guns on it. If you've got bigger, more, if you've got more guns than your opponent, or if you've got bigger guns than your opponent, that is the Thucker way of doing things. And I'm not just making this up visually, it actually mentions this in the description here, after being modified by the Thucker the Vigil also gained an energy resonance function. The fucker don't care for things like electronic warfare, they just want to shoot it till it's dead, that's their approach to warfare. So it seems strange to me that the electronic warfare variant of a particular frigate would be a fucker mix variant, one that the fucker themselves have come up with, but hey, there we go, I'm not going to spend too long talking about this, it's just weird and to me slightly controversial to give your ship the colour scheme of shipbuilders that don't do electronic warfare particularly well, but hey, anyway. Looking again, the fitting profile here is the same as we saw on the Crucifier E-War. Two high slots, two low slots, two, power, uh, two combat and two engineering rigs like on the Tech 4 Vigil, but with that additional third mid slot to give you that little bit of extra functionality. Now again here this means you can build it as you saw in my, Vigil e uh, my Tech 4 Vigil video, but then you can add on th something like a large shield booster, a, a large group shield booster. And that gives you a lot of sort of power to then put things like gyro stabilizers or other weapon upgrade modules, etc., into the low slots. Or if you're going into a fleet PvP function, it means you can fit more tackle, more uh, target painters, that kind of thing. Theoretically, you can sit in a Vigil E War at 60 kilometers away and paint three individual targets. Although, in fairness, that means your fleet is splitting their DPS. Um, better idea is to put all three of those onto one, but then you start to get diminishing returns. Basically, you should never really put more than two target painters onto one target unless you've got a bloody good reason to get rid of that ship absolutely first by any means necessary. So it gives you the option here of going for something like two target painters and then, I don't know, you could even put, for crying out loud, you put a tracking disruptor, guidance disruptor, anything else the heck you like on there just to give you that extra electronic warfare in PvP. Now, comparing this to the Tech 4 Vigil, again, we have a slightly lower power grid. It's gone from 37 down to 35, but the capacitor bank has increased to compensate 406, up from 382. The defences, again, massive increase here from 1297 to 2223. That's almost a thousand, in fact, yeah, that's almost a thousand extra hit points there across the board. Signature Radius has dropped from 27.9 to 24.3, Flight Velocity has climbed from 468 to 476, so we're looking at a smaller, faster variant of the ship here again. Much higher scan resolution, that's gone from uh, all the way up from 483 to 833, so that's a whopping increase there of nearly 400, I think it's 350 millimeters extra scan resolution. The, um, the mass and inertia, again, have both increased, which makes for a slightly slower, more cumbersome ship, which isn't, you know, I say slower, slightly less agile and more cumbersome ship. It's faster, thanks to that flight velocity, um, but it does take a little bit longer to reach that max speed, and it doesn't hold orbits quite as well as its Tech 4 sister does, but that's, you know, that's, that's neither really here nor there. It's still massive improvements here across the entire board. Talking about improvements, if we go into the trait description, again, signal disruption this time around, rather than a 5% in, uh, five increase to target paints target effects, 25% across the board, that's 375 now, with a 7.5% increase to target paints to target effects, thanks to signal disruption. So that's a big increase there into how well the target painters work when mounted onto a Vigil EWAR. Advanced Frigate Command then, again, this has increased. 
it used to be 8% small cannon damage, which would be 40% at full training, and a 5% increase to small cannon accuracy falloff, which, again, would have been 25% at full training. That is now 65% up from 40%, and 37.5% falloff up from 25%. This means the Vigil E-War, again, other than looks or cost, does completely supersede the, uh, the Vigil Tech 4 variant. Once you can build the Vigil E-War, it is just flat out better in every way, shape, and form, except for two points left, two points less of power grid. Ooh, really not sure that's going to ever cause anyone a problem. Um, two points less power grid, otherwise the Vigil E-War is a direct upgrade over its Tech 4 sister. Now, whilst I haven't actually done a video for the Tech 4 Griffin yet, I'm hoping to possibly change that as early as this week. So if you're interested in these Electronic Warfare frigates, do stay tuned to this channel. Hopefully there'll be a Griffin video later this week. That might also be the one that I put this week's Combo Omega giveaway into. I haven't decided yet. So do stay tuned and keep an eye open if you fancy trying to win a whole month of Combo Omega. Anyway, so the Griffin itself. This is a very non-standard design, I think is a good way of putting it. It's not quite as streamlined as some of the other ships. It is basically, I've heard people refer to it as a box that has just got a load of sticks shoved in it, and it certainly is a very rigid central hull structure there. Looks a little bit like a fish, actually, if you kind of stretch your imagination there in the center, um, but with sort of these wings on the side, this massive horn and chin on the front, and this huge sort of drumstick protrusion sticking out of the front. Now, of course, those are all the sensor arrays, the LADARs, the processing units, all that kind of thing that make the Griffin so powerful. And I will talk about that more at length in the Griffin video. Now, I don't hate this design. I actually quite like this design in how unusual it is. Um, here, the Griffin E-War gets a shift up in color scheme, which I'm going to showcase here because it's going to have better lighting if we go into the actual things here. Rather than the usual slate gray and white of a Kaldari ship, it's that kind of off browny gray with the orangey brown detailings. It's an unusual color scheme as well, and I do actually quite like it. It's the same, same sort of design as the Merlin Assault, which is, you know, it's interesting. I do quite like it. Anyway, attributes and fittings wise, you should probably be noting a pattern here. It's two high slots, three mids, two lows, two engineering rigs and two combat rigs. That means, of course, we're just getting an additional mid slot. Otherwise, the fitting profile is the same as its Tech 4 variant. And like the other E-War ships here, we are losing some power grid when we go to the Griffin, to the Griffin E-War. From 48 megawatts down to 47. Oh no, a whole megawatt has been lost. I don't really see this as a problem. I'm curious as to why they've done that. Um, I think it's one of those things that might get a shift and probably get a small boost when these are launched. I don't care. I mean, heck, just make it 48, the same as the Griffin. Why one less? Just seems almost pointless. But the capacitor, on the contrast, does get an increase here, 426 up to 455, so big boost there on the capacitor. Defences again have gone up from 1245 to 2136, so it is a more survivable ship, which you'd kind of expect from a T4 going up to a T6. The signature radius and the flight velocity have both improved. We've gone from 35.6 meters signature radius to 31, and a 367 meters per, seven, uh, meters per second flight velocity up to, uh, sorry, 387 up to 395, so it's slightly faster and quite a bit smaller, which makes it better at speed tanking. The Griffin, of course, it's quite a slow and large frigate in, in, in general regards anyway, so any little changes like that that it can get do really help. The mass, again, has gone up, as has the inertia from 1.056 million to 1.23 million, and a 1.9 inertia modifier has gone up to 2.0. So whilst it's faster and smaller, it is a slightly more cumbersome vessel that takes just a little bit longer to align, struggles with a tight orbit, um, and will speed up and decelerate a little bit slower than uh, the standard Tech 4 variant. But again, when we look into the trait description here, the skills are just flat up increases across the board. The guidance disruption strength used to be 5% per level, it's now 7.5%, so going from 25% increase to 37.5% increase, and Advanced Frigate Commander used to give us 8% increase to small missile damage, 
that was 40% of full training. It's now 15%, which is 65% of full training. So that's a big increase in the damage there. And it's gone from having a 5% flight velocity to, oh no, that one stayed the same. It's still a 5% missile flight time. Um, meaning that you know those missiles do travel that little bit further. It's a range increase. Curious that they kept that the same. It's 5% on both the Tech 4 Griffin and the Tech 6 Griffin E-War. So you're getting the same range out of the missiles regardless of which you go for there. Now, that is unusual because the Vigil had the additional accuracy fall off, went from 5% up to 7.5%, the Crucifier went from optimal range 5% to 7.5%, and spoiler alert, the, the Maulus goes from small railguns optimal range 5% to 7.5% per level. So the Griffin is the only one that doesn't get additional range to its missiles over its Tech 4 counterpart. Make of that what you will. Is that something that will be changed by time these ships go live? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on that one in the comment section below, but for me, I don't know, I actually think that could possibly stay the same because of how powerful missiles can be with that additional range because it's not an accuracy fall off or an optimal range, it's a straight up range. If you're in range, you're either in range or you're not. If you're increasing the range, you're increasing the range that you do the maximum damage full stop. Whereas optimal ranges tend to be very short, so increasing an optimal range doesn't necessarily do all that much for a ship, and increasing accuracy fall off just means that rather than doing 80% damage, you're doing 85% damage or whatever at the same range. Increasing a missile's range means you're doing 100% at 20 kilometers, now doing 100% at 23 kilometers. It's a full on, it's, it's quite a big change. Range on a missile is ultimately a bigger increase um, to effectiveness for the missile than it is on any other type of weapon. But again, maybe I'm talking out my ass there. You can let me know in the comment section down below. I'm sure some of you will scream at me and disagree with what I say about your precious missiles there. But <laughs> hopefully you get the point I'm trying to make. Again then, the Griffin E-War straight up upgrade over the Griffin. The only reason to fly a Griffin once the E-War is added is if you like the look of the Griffin or if you don't have enough money for the E-War. Or I suppose if you're only at tech level 5 or lower. But in fairness, tech level 6 you reach so quickly, does it really matter? I don't know. I don't know. There's no real reason to fly a Griffin once the Griffin E-War is added. Lastly then, and by no means least, the black sheep of the family, the Maulus. And I'm only literally, as I'm recording this, learning that it's got this cool little effect at the bottom there. Look at that. It's you know, sort of like a, almost like a loading screen, a, a loading bar there at the bottom. That's really cool. Anyway, I quite like the Maulus design as a ship. It looks a little bit like a futuristic seahorse um, with some really cool lights and that all over the place. As far as Galente ship designs go, this is one of the weirdest, but at the same time, I actually really quite like it and I love, absolutely adore the array here of propulsion systems around the back. Now, again, like the Griffin, I haven't actually done a video for the Tech 4 Maulus yet, but I am hoping possibly to change that as early as this week, because I had uh, I had a guy actually contact me in the comment sections months ago and give me a fit that he uses for the Maulus, which is what inspired me to do the Crucifier and the, and the Vigil. Uh, videos when I did the Tech 4 Crucifier and Vigil videos, um, so I do need to go back and actually do the Maulus one as well, because I've been having a lot of fun with that ship, and yes, okay, the Electronic Warfare modules are a little bit disappointing for Galente, but quite frankly, this is still a really cool ship, and it may surprise you with what it can do. Anyway, once this all loads and I can actually jump into the fittings and all that, let's have a look at it. So attributes and fittings. Maulus E-War, could you guess what the fitting profile was going to be? Yes, of course, it's 232 with two of each rig type. Exactly the same as the Tech 4 Maulus, but with that additional mid-slot. And it's again going to be kind of up to you what you do with that mid-slot. I do think a large group shield booster is always going to be a fun thing to put on a frigate in its mid-slots. Um, it frees up a low slot for things like weapon upgrade modules or propulsion. Um, so that you can have the survivability in the mid slots instead and have extra weapon damage in the low slots which when you're using something like a Maulus which can fit rail guns and is getting bonuses to snub nosed and things like that well yeah the additional DPS that this can kick out suddenly becomes pretty monstrous but anyway we're getting ahead of ourselves getting way ahead of ourselves power outgrid 
Uh, power grid output again has gone down 46 on the Tech 4 to 45 here on the Tech 6 version, one megawatt of power grid. There's possibly a reason for this, like maybe there's something that you can't fit as easily on a 45 as you could on a 46, but to me it just seems really arbitrary. Like literally one point in training in uh, frigate engineering and you've more than overridden that. It's insane, like by the time you get 10% additional power grid, you're going from 45 up to, you know, 40, well, 49.50 anyway, so losing that one point, you know, the difference between 46 plus 10% and 45 plus 10% is still 50. There's no real difference there. Anyway, the capacitor has increased accordingly. That's gone from 414 to 442. Defense has gone up dramatically, 1288 to 2210. Um, and of course then Signature Radius and Flight Velocity have both improved as well. We've gone from 34.2 down to 29.8. So the Maulus Ebor just sneaks in under 30 meters of Signature Radius, which is not quite the magic numbers, but it is a big change and does help things out quite nicely. We then have the flight velocity going up a little bit from 418 to 426, so it's 8 additional meters per second, it's a little bit faster, helps it out with speed tanking just that little bit, it's not really a huge increase, but it's again, it's nice to have. Scan resolution though, is again a massive increase from 452 to 779, 452 up to 779, that's a humongous increase, that means the Maulacy War locks on monstrously faster than its brethren. Then, of course, the mass and inertia, again, have both increased. 1.06 million um, to 1.2 million, and 1.92 on the inertia modifier to 2.05. It's worth pointing out as well, something I haven't mentioned on the other three. The warp speed of these has gone up to 6.0 astronomical units per second. That's a really fast warp speed. Um, like, literally, that's about as fast as it gets outside of the Dramiel, which... <laughs> it, it's a really interesting thing to have extra warp speed on the E-War um, frigates, but it, I suppose it does mean that for encounter running, they're going to be actually quite useful. Looking then at the trait descriptions, again, it is exactly what you would expect. The signal disruption bonus has gone from a 5% increase to sensor dampener strength to 7.5% sensor damper strength. So again, that's going from 25% to 37.5%. And then advanced frigate command, instead of it being 8% additional railgun damage and 5% additional optimal range, it's now 15% damage and 7.5 optimal range. So going from 40% damage to 65% and going from 25% optimal range up to 37.5% there. That means, again, flat out upgrade over its Tech 4 variant. And I did have a little bit of a rant here in the Crucifier variant um, when I mentioned here that, you know, I don't like it when a, a ship comes out and it just flat out supersedes the previous one. I would actually be happier here if the E warships and the, the, the Tech 6 and Tech 4 swapped the frigate command bonuses around. Give the E war versions the extra sensor damper strength, the extra guidance and tracking disruptors, target painters, all that kind of thing, but then make the Tech 4 variant the damaging version. Like in EVE Online, you have the, uh, the Crucifier and the Crucifier Navy issue, the Maulus and the Maulus Navy issue. Basically, the Maulus is sort of the electronic warfare variant, and then the Maulus Navy issue swaps out all of that electronic warfare backing stuff and gives additional damage instead. So it becomes more combat focused and less uh, sort of about the electronic warfare. That to me, ultimately, the Maulus is going to be the dark horse of this in, in, in any situation. It's always going to be the black sheep because it's sensor dampers, and people just don't want sensor dampers. They do so little in EVE Echoes because they don't shorten the lock-on range. They only make you lock-on fast, uh, slower, which, once you've locked on, makes it completely completely useless, whereas at least if it shortened the lock-on range as well, you could actually try and outrange the enemy's lock range you know, and, and force them to lose um, force them to lose lock and then have to reapply it and all that kind of thing. There's a lot of, uh, lot of stuff here with the sensor dampers that could be done, I think, to improve them. They're just a really disappointing um, electronic warfare system as it currently stands. But there we are, otherwise, as I said, more or less E-War, flat-out upgrade over its Tech 4 brethren. 
Now, whilst that's all four of the Tech 6 frigates here, which you can see the Griffin, the Vigil, the Crucifier, and the Mauler Sea War, that's not the full electronic warfare story. There are still the cruisers and the battle cruisers, and I do wholeheartedly intend to cover those in videos later this week also. So, if you're interested in hearing about things like the Blackbird, Bellicose, Arbitrator, and Celestis Sea Warships, or the Drake, Hurricane, Harbinger, and Brutic Sea Warships, do stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and make sure that you select uh, full notifications for everything. You will never miss an upload if you do that. And there will be a Combo Omega giveaway some point this week as well. Two lucky people will each win one month of Combo Omega. So stay tuned to this channel. Keep it right here for all things EVE Echoes. Now, of course, these are just my thoughts and opinions. I'm talking here about these frigates and what I think they're going to do, how I think they'll be. They do appear to be direct upgrades. Um, what do you guys think? Are these ships that you're looking forward to flying? Are they just another unnecessary addition to the game? Do you sort of sit there and go, well, I see why they haven't bothered to add them to the game? Do you have an idea on when you think they might actually add these back into the game that we can start flying these Tech 6 ships? Because as far as I'm concerned, adding more frigates to the game is always going to be a good and exciting thing. More frigates means more versatility, more fun to be had out there as a dedicated frigate pilot. But there we are. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section. Stay tuned for the cruiser and the battle cruiser variants of the E-Warships later this week. Also, possibly the Griffin and the Maulus finally getting their uh, Frigate Pilot Manifesto videos. Otherwise, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way to the end. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!